So I spent the last week thinking about May monthly setups and honestly, it's thrown my head into such a tizzy because we just started April. Why am I thinking about May? I don't know about you, but a lot of YouTube videos I watch about bullet journaling, often the creator says something like, I can't believe time's moving this fast, or I can't believe we're already up to insert month here. And like, I'm totally guilty of doing the same thing because yeah, it, it does feel like time passes pretty quickly. But I've come to realize that part of the reason that I always find myself saying that is because I set my journal up early so that I can get it to you guys so you can use it for inspiration if you want to. The journal we're setting up here today isn't actually mine, this one's from my friend Rachel and as you can probably tell we're going with a Disney villains theme so for our quote page we have the shell that Ursula wears and for our cover page we have the poison apple from Snow White but yeah although I like to set my journal up in advance so you guys can use it for inspiration if you want to it totally gets my brain all confused about what month I'm actually working in it is currently April I'm still working in my April pages despite having already set up May in terms of what we're setting up here though, the cover page was actually one of the first things that I penciled out into Rachel's journal. Pretty much as soon as she said she wanted a Disney villains theme, I knew that I wanted to do the poison apple with the word May revealed through the dripping poison. I'm not completely sold on the idea to color it in, but I also feel like the page would look a little bit empty if I had have just left it as black line work. This idea of the pages not looking quite full enough for May was something that I kind of struggled with, but I think that leaving them a little bit more open with some more white space was an okay thing to do this month. That feeling was probably also amplified by the fact that I just finished setting up her April pages where we had the bubble tea theme, which had a bit more full decoration on the quote and cover page. If you hadn't seen that one, it is a super cute setup and it's linked in the description box below. Because both Rachel and I have recently watched the Descendants movies, so Descendants 1, 2, and 3, which are essentially about the kids of Disney villains, I wanted to include some Descendants quotes here. So we have, they say I'm trouble from the first line of the song Rotten to the Core, and then of course around the apple we had to say rotten to the core. I know they're not like traditionally good movies but I very much enjoyed them. In terms of timing for our quote and cover page, the quote page took 9 minutes from first touch of the pen to final erasings and the cover page took 15 and a half. As always though this doesn't include penciling in time or idea generation time. Flipping on over though and we are on to the monthly log. Rather than starting with the calendar, I'm instead going in to do the decoration on the right hand page and for this one we have a little lineup of our Disney villains. The design of this one was very much taken from a tea turtle t-shirt. They do super cute t-shirts related to pop culture things. And again, when Rachel said she wanted a Disney villains theme, I knew I was going to have to use one of their designs in the setup. I picked this one in particular because I liked that they were all in rainbow order. And then I could mimic this on the weekly logs where we have seven colors for the seven days of the week. For our little Disney villain lineup though, going from left to right, we have Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, Scar from The Lion King, Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians, Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty, Hades from Hercules, and Ursula from The Little Mermaid. I'd be curious to know who your favorite Disney villain is, or even if not favorite, maybe the most relatable villain or villain that you can kind of understand why they were a villain. As a favorite, I'd probably have to say Ursula from The Little Mermaid. I just think she's sassy and I kind of like that. In terms of relatable, I'd probably have to say Isma from The Emperor's New Groove because Cusco was such a shitty boss. Not to say that she necessarily was gonna rule the kingdom the way that I would rule it, but I still feel like she might've been doing a better job than Cusco was. Anywho, I'd be curious to hear about your preferences for Disney villains. This spread was another one where I was kind of getting that feeling of possibly having left too much white space, but now looking back on it, I'm not necessarily sad about the amount of white space. In particular, on the left-hand page, I didn't add any decoration around the calendar, just because I didn't really want to distract from our Disney villains on the right-hand page, and I didn't have any small motifs that I could really think of to sprinkle around the calendar. In the bubble tea theme, we of course had the little bubble tea containers and then some little circles to represent bubbles. But in this one, I didn't want to have anything too detailed around the calendar and I didn't have any other motif that I was using repeatedly on all the pages. For instance, I could put some stars and sparkles around the calendar, but I didn't have those on any of the other pages. So they'd probably end up looking a little bit out of place if I had have included them. I know we've talked about it previously, but one of the things that I very much like to do in my monthly setups is making sure that all of the pages are cohesive. 
they all work together, which means they have repeated elements like the same color palette, the same fonts, and the same design elements. In terms of this setup, the fonts certainly did stay the same, but the design elements kind of changed from page to page. On this page we have our kind of cutesy style characters, which honestly I'm totally sold on, I think they look awesome. But then on the quote and cover page we have those two larger icons of those particular Disney movies. And then on the weekly log you'll see I opted again to use those icons. So I guess in that respect there is a repeated element. Maybe I'm overthinking this. I don't know. I'm pretty chuffed with how it turned out though. What do you guys think? Do you think there's something missing on this page? Or do you think that just having the decorative element in the corner of the spread was fine? For Rachel's monthly log, we're using that style of having the mini calendar at the top half of the page, and then two columns for each of the days of the month in the bottom. So one column with 16, the other column with 15. I've been using a similar style for myself in April and have been quite enjoying it, but if you're looking to change up your style of monthly log, I do have a recent video on 20 different styles of monthly log that might be useful. That one, as can be expected, is linked in the description box as well as the cards above. I put another quote from the Descendants movie on the right hand page, this one saying, Mirror mirror on the wall, who's the baddest of them all? Again from our Rotten to the Core song. And then here's me trying to remedy that feeling of there being too much white space by adding a drop shadow around our calendar and finishing off the page with some white highlights on the eyes of our villains. In terms of timing, this spread took the longest amount of time in today's setup, coming in in about 40 minutes. Again though, this time doesn't include the sketching in of our characters and the rest of the layout. And although outside of that corner decoration it is fairly minimal, I think it turned out really cute. Still not completely sold on the amount of white space, but I am chuffed with it. Flipping over though, and we're on to the weekly log. For this one we're using the same style that we've been using for the rest of the journal, so having seven spaces running down the page on the left hand side, and then the right hand page is open for a task list. To tie the design of this one to the rest of the pages, we're using the same style of font, so those serif capital letters, and to decorate each of the days of the week, we're putting in an icon to represent some of our villains. So the first one for Monday, we have the red apple, being the apple from Snow White. For Tuesday, we have Dr. Facilio's talisman from The Princess and the Frog. For Wednesday, we have Ursula's shell. Thursday, we have Maleficent's scepter. For Friday, we have Hades' fire. We have a purple lion paw print for Scar on Saturday, and then on Sunday we have a potion vial for Yzma. I intentionally placed these so they'd be in rainbow order to kind of mimic the rainbow order that we had from our Disney villains on the monthly log, and kept the designs fairly simple so that I could recreate them on each of the pages. Each of the weekly logs took about 7 minutes, but now heading into the final flip through, we have the quote and cover page, the monthly log with our little Disney villain lineup, and the weekly spreads with those little symbols to represent our Disney villains. I really enjoy doing bullet journal Disney themes, and actually I did one for May a couple of years ago that you might be interested in if you enjoyed this one. That one's linked on the screen here if you hadn't already seen it, and as always, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and until next time, bye!